A big hello to uh, Man City Fan TV and, and a special thanks to Andy there because he's about to take you inside the Dream Scene painting. I'm Jamie, the artist who painted it. Um, you might wonder why a guy from Australia has painted such an intimate history of your club. Well, I've been doing these historical portraits for about 20 years for my, my home country of Australia and then the United States and Spain and now the UK. But I've specialised in putting together these, these paintings that have players from all different eras in together in one moment in time, like every fan's dream come true. I'm a football fan, an ex-professional footballer in Australia, so I understand what a community means to the club and what the club means to the community. So it's been a great delight for me to produce this, particularly because my dad was born just outside Stockport and Cheadle Hume. So I've had the names of these guys in my ears since I was a wee lad and uh, it's been a real pleasure to do this. So Andy's going to walk you through all the hidden stories that are put through this painting. There's a million of them. I haven't just put the players in there doing nothing. They're all telling little stories about themselves or about the history of the club. So enjoy the walk through time and congratulations on a fantastic history of this great club. Hi guys, it's Andy from Man City Fan TV. A uh, slightly different video today. It's nothing to do with sort of transfer news and things like that. What it is, is uh, we're going to discuss, and I'm going to show you, um, you may have seen it before, it's the wonderful piece of artwork that Manchester City uh, commissioned uh, the international renowned sports um, artist, Jamie Cooper, to do, um, charting the club's history. Um, so, I'm going to show you some images, I'm going to show you the, uh, there'll be lots of images in here, I'm going to show you the main um, painting uh, that he he did uh, and this this is the one and I'm sure you've you've already seen it on some of the uh, the news outlets and also um, he was around at the match uh, at the weekend against Newcastle talking about uh, the actual uh, prints and things for sale so anyway this is the main um, image uh, and this is called dream scene now this uh, this particular uh, painting, it, this is a three meter oil on canvas and it contains 31 different figures which I'm going to talk about um, and hundreds of different images that's took well over a year um, to create. Uh, Jamie was uh, an ex-professional footballer uh, from Australia and for the last, after he retired, uh, after the last 20 years or over the last 20 years, he's, uh, he's been creating some absolutely incredible pieces of artwork um, on different sports, anything from um, Aussie rules through to football, um, lots of other different um, areas of sport. Uh, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to go through and uh, look at and break down the actual main uh, I images and uh, backstory behind how he came to one to include uh, the individuals that are on there and i'm sure there'll be lots of debate uh, which i think he said himself of there are players who are missing there are players who they, some people might believe shouldn't have been in there and uh, you know images people like dennis Stewart. Uh, for example, uh, Andy Morrison, uh, many other city players, but he couldn't fit everybody into just one particular um, painting. So uh, the club were heavily involved in uh, discussing uh, who should be in there as well. Uh, and it's, t it's painstaking work and uh, I guess you'll never please everybody. But what I'd like to do is just go through um, the actual painting and just highlight uh, who is in there, why they're in there, and then have a look at some, you know, little specific things that Jamie's put in there that are relevant to that particular person. Now, if you go on the Man City website, you'll also be able to look through these images uh, on an interactive uh, booklet, uh, which is really, really interesting. And you can also purchase that. And more details about that will be at the end of the video. So if you do, if you are, have got enough money and uh, you want to purchase one of these uh, oil on canvas uh, paintings, I think the cheapest one is around about £500 uh, and it goes up. But if you consider um, just the work and effort that's gone into creating this, and so you can imagine having this hung on your wall, 
it's certainly going to be on my list there, uh, my uh, Christmas shopping list. So um, I'll be pushing this video towards my wife uh, as soon as it's out. Uh, so anyway, we're going to go through, I'm going to have a look at the booklet and uh, we're going to have a look at what the booklet contains and a little bit of the um, backstory to um, who is in there, why they're in there and then some just little um, hidden little gems there that uh, are relevant to that particular person. Okay, as you can see in the first image, uh, there's an introduction in the booklet and uh, then the first sort of main images uh, within the booklet uh, that they focus in on from the main oil painting is, um, and I'll read these out because there's lots and lots of information. The first one is Consistent Assistant and this is about Kevin De Bruyne and it talks about his assists and how he's the assist king, etc. Next to him in the, uh, in the image, is, uh, it says the rise of women's football and in there is uh, our women's uh, football captain uh, which is Steph Horton uh, and then next it says the prodigal son returns and of course that's uh, Sean Wright Phillips so it gives a little bit in the, in the booklet in the catalogue it gives a little bit of um, a bit of background history as to why these individuals were um, included in the actual painting now in this particular image here, uh, this shows you uh, obviously one old uh, ex-player and obviously one current player. And that is, uh, this one's called A Moment in Time uh, and that is Sergio Aguero. And it's obviously referring to the 93-20 moment uh, where he took his shirt off and went running around the side of the pitch until he was absolutely jumped all over by the rest of the players. But one thing just with this particular image, if you focus in closely with his shirt, what they've actually done in the label there that's sticking out, they've actually put 9320 um, in reference to his goal against QPR. And then obviously we've got there uh, in the background, we've got Uwe Rosler uh, and a great little piece about, uh, about Uwe and uh, the fact of uh, how... Uh, how he was adored um, by Manchester City fans and then his battle uh, with uh, cancer. So uh, he's been a, he's, he's considered a club legend. Now in this next image uh, that in the booklet, uh, what it's titled as is Cometh the Hour, Cometh the Man. And uh, this is about Yaya Torre. Uh, and it talks here about, uh, about his most important goals, etc. Um, certainly the FA Cup final and uh, Newcastle and the final and and, uh, and other things about him. But the interesting part of this one is if you see on the main photograph and go back to it in the video or if you've got an image of it on there, if you zoom in above Yaya Torre in his locker, what's up there is a lighted candle uh, on top of a birthday cake. So, um, yeah, a little bit of uh, bit of uh, tomfoolery there with uh, with what happened with Yaya Torre. Uh, we've also got in the in the video in the image. We've also got Richard Dunn, and uh, a really nice piece about uh, about Dunny. Um, and it actually talks. Uh, if you see the image, you can see above there where it's showing a little trophy in his uh, in his locker. Uh, there are eight red cards because he still holds the uh, the record for the most um, Premier League uh, red cards uh, for anybody at one particular club. So again, a nice little reference there, and it's great to see Richard Dunn actually in in, in the painting. In the uh, in this particular image, uh, what you've got is uh, the legend that is uh, Georgie Kincladsey, and uh, he was obviously at the match, the Newcastle match uh, at the weekend on Saturday. Uh, and I think Ray put out some photographs with him in a video uh, as well in our uh, in our videos after the actual match. Now with Georgie King Clancy, um, again, Twinkle Toes is the uh, is the caption above him. But if you notice um, just underneath him, uh, his Foot Locker there, you'll see some uh, uh, ballerina shoes. Now the relevance of that is that when he was a kid, his father forced him to take ballet lessons and he believes today that uh, it was those ballet lessons that just made his feet 
so nimble, so quick, uh, and uh, definitely contributed to his incredible skill on the ball. So Georgie will always be a City legend, certainly in 99.9% .9 of fans' eyes anyway. Next to him, we've got Feed the Goat, and he will score uh, for obvious reasons. Um, another massive club legend uh, at Manchester City. Uh, and you'll notice behind him, is a calendar on the wall and it's a, it's a Bermudan calendar with the date June the 21st public holiday Sean Go today uh, and that now is a, the official um, holiday uh, there's actually a Sean Go today holiday in Bermuda on the 21st of June so that was a really nice touch as well by Jamie now in this image uh, which is entitled where angels fear to tread this is obviously the warrior that is Pablo Zabaleta. And you can see here, I mean, what they've done is basically how many times have we seen Pablo with his shirt off walking off the pitch for treatment or at the end of a game with that infamous sort of bandage wrapped around his head with blood streaming through it. So um, again, uh, Zaba, another f incredible club legend, proper adopted mank so uh, it's really pleasing to see him in there he's got his arm around uh, the next one which is Merlin the Magician and uh, obviously that's uh, referring to David Silver um, again I mean I've said this numerous on numerous occasions on video my all-time uh, favorite Manchester City player but if you notice carefully with his arm that Silver's got around Zabaleta's waist he's carrying a wand um, so there's the there's the nice little touch from Jamie uh, with regard to uh, David Silva, where he says, uh, um, ready to cast another spell. Now, this is a really nice part of the oil painting, and it's called Shaking Hands Across Time. And as you can see here, we've got uh, our first sort of successful captain, and that was, uh, that was Billy Meredith. Now, Billy um, actually played until he was 49 years of age, uh, and you can see, you might be able to see just in his mouth, he's, uh, he's got a toothpick. And he was infamous for chewing uh, and having the toothpick in his mouth uh, whilst, uh, whilst also playing. And uh, he was also City's first successful captain. And uh, it's just a nice moment there um, of the two um, captains from completely different eras, eras looking at each other and shaking hands. So uh, sort of bridging that gap between the old and the present. Um, you'll also notice um, just um, where Vinny's head is in, in his overhead locker you can see there a load of books and Vinny is an avid reader and, and certainly on books on philosophy so a nice little touch there by Jamie um, sort of in, in reference to where uh, Vinny being a bit of a brain box uh, likes to read and certainly likes to read philosophical books as well okay in this uh, in this part of uh, of the booklet and, uh, and the oil painting uh, we've got escape to victory and clearly that's in reference to uh, to Mike Summerby and uh, as we know he was uh, in the film with Sylvester Stallone and Pele uh, amongst many others uh, some other ex-footballers as well and uh, you can see in the background what they've done is they've they've, uh, they've put uh, a movie sort of clapperboard in, in his locker above his head next to him it is the the reference is surging forward and that's all about um, Eric Brook and uh, he stands proudly in the centre of the painting uh, with the, the Holy Trinity. And then we've got the final piece in the jigsaw, which is Francis Lee. Uh, and that was what Joe Mercer said uh, Franny Lee was. He was the final piece in the jigs jigsaw in, in, in that particular era. So again, a nice touch with, with Buzzer and uh, Franny Lee, but also going back to the 20s and 30s uh, with Eric Brooke. In this next image here, uh, three different uh, players. We've got um, it's term. Let's get this party started, and we've got uh, Paul Dickoff with that uh, infamous celebration stance. But if you notice in the background, what you'll see is his 1999 shirt uh, from the infamous game against Gillingham. We've also got Joe Hart there with his uh, his bottle of champagne and his war face, and that's that's mainly taken from the the 2014 Premier League title win. And then below what we've got there is we've well obviously we've got Nijinsky, we've got Colin Bell, uh, and what he's doing is holding a crown, and that was when um, a, a fan 
uh, ran onto the field and actually gave him um, a crown and uh, that actual crown still resides today in the National Football Museum so go along and have a look at it. This is a nice uh, nice one and some, some people have actually said well why isn't Manuel Pellegrini uh, involved in this? Well I mean who knows but uh, th there's, there's four particular characters. We've got obviously we've got Big Malcolm uh, Big Mal, uh, Malcolm Allison, uh, with his uh, his usual coat and fedora hat, um, making everybody laugh. We've got Pep Guardiola there, clearly quite open um, to having a good laugh with Mal. We've got Bobby Mank there, and obviously with his infamous blue and white scarf. And then we've got the legend that is Joe Mercer. Uh, Mercer obviously having that uh, that wonderful partnership, uh, bringing in Malcolm Allison. Um, who was way ahead of his time um, when he came because uh, Joe Mercer had come out of hospital, he'd been very poorly and wasn't really fit enough, even though he accepted the Man City job, uh, wasn't really fit enough um, to look after the team on a full-time basis, but had the genius to bring in Malcolm Allison as the, as the coach. I really like this particular image um, in the painting, or this part of the painting. This is obviously uh, titled Skip, and I'm referring to Tony Book. Uh, holding up the 1969 FA Cup with his two mates. We've then got Mr. Dependable, which is Alan, Alan Oakes. And uh, Shankly, Bill Shankly actually said of him that uh, he was the absolute perfect role model for footballers. Um, so uh, great praise there from, from a footballing great. And then we've got our Nelly, Neil Young. Um, the reference in this particular part of the image is you can see he's got the red and black striped scarf on. Uh, in reference to the 69 FA Cup uh, final and uh, also the uh, European Cup Winners' Cup uh, in 1970. So yeah, it's a really nice, really nice part uh, of that and that's it's probably one of my favourites in, in the whole pictures. Now with this one, this is, uh, this is back to our goalkeepers and then uh, the infamous, uh, they don't make them like they used to. Well this is obviously is referring to Bert Troutman and if uh, certainly for younger Blues if you don't remember um, who Bert Troutman is or you, you know, you, you've not read much uh, about him go, go and uh, read up on him and what a career I mean he was part of the Nazi youth came over and, and was in a prisoner of war camp and uh, eventually went on to play professional football now you can imagine um, certainly somebody being a uh, part of the, uh, the Nazi war movement um, then actually staying in the UK and uh, becoming a professional footballer not long after the war uh, must have been a very difficult time but um, his bravery uh, was was demonstrated and you can see here in the image he's holding his neck um, he was knocked unconscious in the 56 FA Cup final but the uh, the physio or some helper uh, came on uh, with a wet sponge the magical wet sponge and uh, Basically, he continued playing, and days later, uh, it was revealed that he had a broken neck. Um, so you can see there also he's got his foot up on a bottle of champagne. So probably deserved it after uh, after playing you know, the rest of the match with uh, with a broken neck. And then next to him, you can see there laughing and joking, and it's got uh, it's in good hands. And that's the the other goalkeeper from uh, before Troutman, and that's Frank Swift. Uh, they said he had hands the size of frying pans, uh, and but they said he had healing hands. So uh, sadly, um, after his footballing career, Frank Swift went on to be a News of the World journalist uh, and sadly died in the Munich air disaster. So um, it's great of the club to actually recognise uh, Frank Swift in this particular painting. This one's actually entitled Born Blue, and I think it's uh, fairly simple. Um, city legend Mike Doyle. Uh, as you can see here, um, he's, uh, he's got the 70, 76 League Cup uh, balancing on his head. But if you just notice on his uh, right fore forearm, you can see he's bleeding, but he's bleeding blue blood. Uh, born a Manc, uh, proper Manchester born and bred, um, ex-City player, ex and current legend uh, of the club. So it's great to see uh, Mike Doyle in there as well. Going back to the keepers again, and we, we looked at uh, Bert Troutman and Frank Swift. Well, next, sitting next to them in the main painting, we've got Big Joe, Big Joe Corrigan. Uh, and it says, for whom the bell tolls, and what is cold in there is obviously the bell, 
that was infamous, certainly in my era going and sitting pretty pretty close to where she was, was uh, the bell that used to be rung by Helen Turner, who sadly passed away a few years ago. Um, but you'll also notice just in the background um, in his locker, he's got a sprig of uh, heather and uh, she used to give Joe um, a little bit of heather before every game that he used to put into his glove as a good luck charm. In this image, which is quite funny, I mean, it just, just, just uh, the smile, it says, speak in your mind, and, uh, you know, his smile just used to, uh, anytime you see him, he always looks like he's happy, I mean, and it makes everybody laugh, and he's always joking around, certainly when he was at Manchester City, and that's obviously uh, club legend Micah Richards. Uh, now, what you'll see in this particular uh, photo here is he's holding a bar of soap, and obviously that, uh, for those who don't know, uh, the younger generation is holding that bar of soap because after his, uh, he was only a kid and he scored that uh, that that goal, that last second goal, and uh, he then went on in uh, post match interview and he swore he said the f word, uh, to which his mum said that uh, he she should wash his mouth out with a bar of soap. So that's why he's laughing and he's he's. He's got the bar of soap in his hand, and then also what he's got there is he's, he's got like um, a little um, a music device uh, which has got uh, is in relevance in reference to uh, he starred in uh, a mate of his uh, T2's video um, for Heartbroken, and plus we've also in his locker there's a set of weights due to obviously his physicality he was always huge. Um, muscle bound etc but I mean I think I think that's a, a, a wonderful uh, the way he's captured uh, Micah's uh, smile uh, and the way he laughs uh, so I think that's a really really nice touch by Jamie Cooper and in the uh, just towards the back of the uh, the fantastic booklet that uh, they've produced is just some uh, just highlighting some particular um, key moments things that, you, that uh, are relevant within the painting and we've got on the floor we've obviously got the the blow up bananas um, probably started by somebody called Frank Newton uh, who brought a banana an inflatable banana to the game and then suddenly the whole craze seemed to have uh, grew after that certainly in my day and in December 87 12,000 city fans invaded Stoke uh, with carrying inflatables and dressed in fancy dress and it sort of became a common theme then um, so bringing a little bit of fun back certainly to an era that was rife with football violence and hooliganism so uh, you know not only have we got loyal fans we've got fans that are also you know got a great sense of humor as well and we needed it back then then we've got the obvious welcome to manchester which was put up in uh, deansgate when uh, carlos tevez arrived and uh, it's been copied on numerous occasions since but uh, again a little bit of cheekiness from uh, from manchester city there uh, across the with the red side of uh, manchester or just outside of manchester uh, what we've got there is rose it's called rose the tea lady uh, and uh, this is got, this is in reference to uh, Rose Woolrich, uh, who started working at the club in the very early seventies. And uh, what she did was she had a special sort of room for the photographers, where she would give them cups of tea and look after them. And actually, uh, Rose still works at the he at the Etihad now, uh, and still has her own special room. So a really nice, really nice thought there that uh, that somebody suggested was should be in the painting. And then finally, and finally, what we've got is um, just uh, four more sort of images uh, from the actual painting zoomed in on. And what we've got there, we've got Chappie's kit bag uh, on there. And, and just lying across it, we've got the Mario's infamous Why Always Me t-shirt after the, just prior to the game, the 6-1 uh, drumming of uh, United. Um, obviously, he'd had a bit of a uh, few friends round. A bit of a party and fireworks were set off in the bathroom, causing about £30,000 worth of fire damage to his rented property. Um, and he'd been in a few bits of scrapes and troubles and been pulled over by police prior to that. And then, obviously, he scored that first wonderful finish um, against United in the 6-1 win. And then uh, revealed his T-shirt that Chappie had uh, printed for him, saying "Why always me?" So that was a nice touch. We've obviously got the Manchester B in there, which uh, is, uh, as we know, it's been the symbol of Manchester 
um, for over 150 years. Uh, and the Manchester Worker Bee obviously demonstrates community spirit and endeavour. Uh, and has become even more prominent uh, with only uh, with the recent tragedy um, that occurred at the MEN Arena, uh, when many uh, people lost their lives. And at the bottom, we've got the Gorton Cross. Um, so, basically, after the club uh, became established as St Mark's, um, which was playing its first reported game in November uh, 1880. Then in, in 1884, it reformed as Gorton Association Football Club and a white cross was placed on their new black kit, uh, on their shirts. And so what they, they believe is it was still keeping links with St. Mark's and so uh, it's always been there, uh, the Gorton Cross. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed, I really hope you enjoyed that sort of talk through on... Um, on the painting and I'm sure there are many many other little things in there because Jamie Cooper stated that there were hundreds um, of images that he tried to put in there um, are you gonna buy one uh, it's a lot of money but I tell you what it would be a fantastic talking piece to have on your wall um, like I said I'm certainly gonna be getting into my wife's ribs and uh, seeing whether there's any possibility of uh, of me getting one for my Christmas present but I hope you like the talk through uh, don't forget uh, go on the Manchester City website is uh, where you'll be able to find a link where you can actually zoom in and, and read through the whole booklet uh, that's on there you don't you don't forget you can also purchase the booklet I'm uh, I'm purchasing mine shortly and uh, yeah I mean what give us your comments below the video do you think there sort of should have been certain players not in the painting or certain players that definitely should have been in there it's going to be it's going to be a personal choice i guess and i'm sure that jamie couldn't and the club couldn't fit every single person in there uh, but i think he's done an absolutely wonderful job and uh, yeah i mean it's a great sort of it's a great sort of uh, look through our our history you know that history that certain clubs don't uh, other fans of clubs don't seem to think we have uh, well this 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 painting is is uh, it proves that we do and so anyway guys this is Andy from Man City Fan TV I hope you enjoyed the video don't forget please subscribe click notification and comment below the video and we'll see you soon